this video, we're going to be using the mill software to go through and machine this part that we just drew in the CAD tutorial. So we're going to start off by going down here to the cam tree and starting a new job. You have three ways of starting a new job here. You can go up to the cam tab and say new job, or you can click this little button right here and say new job, or you can right click on cam defaults and just say new job. Now all of those are going to get you to the same place. We want to go with milling and then we're going to use the BC3X mill. And we're going to go right down here to the stock wizard. Now I'm pretty much going to let Bobcad pick the stock for me, but before I get to the stock, we're going to define our workpiece. And what the workpiece is, is our final finished product. This model here represents the final finished product of my part. And so I'm going to click it and then hit next. Now right here, we're going to go ahead and choose a cylindrical type stock right there. And we're going to say use a bounding cylinder. And then we can go ahead and say calculate the stock. And so this is going to just create a cylinder around our part at the exact height of everything for that part. So from here, we'll just go ahead and hit next. And then we're going to go ahead and set our origin at the top dead center. So I'm going to go ahead and say origin. And I'm going to pick this center point right here at the top. And then from there, we could just scroll down. And right here we have our clearance plane. So the clearance plane is the safe area above everything on the part. I'm going to make sure to leave that at one inch. I don't really have to worry about too much happening here, but this should be a, a nice clean cut around here with that one inch. So when we're done and we can't hit any more next arrows or arrows pointing to the right, we can hit OK. Now after we create the stock, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on the word stock inside the cam tree and then just say blank unblank. And that's just visually going to hide that piece of stock. Now, after we're done with that, the next step is to go set up all the tools. Now, this isn't something you have to do, but it can speed up the entire job if you start by making your tool crib. So now that I'm in here, I have my milling contextual tab here. So I'm going to go right over here to tools and then down to tool crib. You could also right click on milling tools and just go to tool crib. Now there's seven tools that I want to use on this part. So I'm going to start by setting up the center drills and the drills first. So I'm just going to go right here to the center drill and I'm going to add from the tool library and I'm going to go ahead and just pick my 90 degree spot drill. So right down here, I have a half inch 90 degree spot. So all you do is click on it and then hit OK. Below that, we then go to the drill, and we're picking two drills from in here. We're going to add from our tool library. One's going to be a 3 8 drill, and one's going to be a 3 quarter inch drill. If you want to sort by the diameter, makes it a little easier. Now I can scroll down and try and find any of those drills. So I'm just going to scroll down, and right here is my 3 8 Then I'll hit OK. And then we'll say add again from the tool library. This time I'm going to go sort by my diameter, and I'm going to go find 0.75. For my three quarter inch drill so right there we'll pick that and then hit ok so now we have the center drill the drill and the other drill so we have our half inch center drill our three eighths drill and our three quarter inch drill now we're going to go start setting up a few more options so one of them we're going to set up a chamfer mill so i'm going to go into the chamfer mill i'm going to add from the tool library and i'm going to pick my half inch chamfer end mill so i'm just going to pick tool 166 right there and then hit ok and so now that we have the chamfer mill in, we're going to go pick three final tools, which is end mills from the end mill rough category. So we're going to click on end mill rough and then add from the tool library. And the first one we're going to do is we're going to sort by the diameter and then I'm going to flip the direction so that we get this big old three inch face mill right up here. This is what we're going to use for roughing. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that and then hit OK. So now we have our three inch face mill and then we're going to go back into the tool library. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick a ball mill. So I'm going to sort over here. I'm going to do a search on the tool label and I'm going to say contains and I'm just going to say ball and then I'll say filter. So I have a half inch ball rough end mill standard and that's exactly what I want because that bottom radius is a quarter inch. So this should leave me a nice clean finish around there. Then I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then finally, we're going to go pick one last end mill, and we're just going to say add from the tool library. This time, I'm just going to sort by the diameter and scroll down till I find myself my 3 8 flat end mill standard, and then just hit OK. And so now we have a 3 8 we have a half inch ball, and we have a three inch face mill, as well as some drills and center drills and a chamfer mill. 
So now we've set up all the tooling for this. Now we can hit OK and get started on actually cutting this part out. So I'm going to start off with a feature three axis. You can get to this by right clicking on machine setup one, or you can go up here and you can go down to the solid surface machining. So I'm going to pick that part right there, just the mill three axis. Now for the geometry, we're just going to click on select geometry. And for three axis, we're just going to drag a box around the entire part. We're not actually going to pick a boundary because my stock is kind of bounding everything out for me. So now I'll just go ahead and hit OK. And now we have our geometry selected. After this, we'll go ahead and hit Next. Right here, we have our feature page. So we have our clearance plane, our rapid plane, and our feed plane, as well as our top of feature. Next again. Now, I'm going to be using the three-axis pro tool paths, but if all you have is the three-axis standard, you can actually swap out what I'm about to do with a couple simple features. Now, I am using one for a flat lands, so I'm going to add that in as well, but I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of my current operations. I'm going to add in an advanced rough, but if you had the standard, try using a Z-level rough. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose a flatlands. Now for the flatlands, you really don't have anything that makes up for this inside of the standard version. The best thing to do would be using open pockets and doing a 2D pocket on the top of the part. But in this case, I can use the flatlands and move that over. And then finally, the last one's going to be the advanced Z-level finish. So I'm just going to move that over as well. So I have an advanced rough, a flatlands, and an advanced Z-level finish. If you don't have the pros, again, you can use the Z-level rough. Get rid of the flatlands. You'll probably use a flat pocket to do the flat areas. And then the Z-level finish would be pretty well fine to use as well. It'll give you a pretty decent finish down this part, all depending on what we set for our depth of cut. Now, after we have that toolpath created or set up, we're going to go ahead and hit Next. We get to our posting page. And on this page, we want to make sure to check Arc Fit and then hit Next again. Now we're going to go up to the tool crib right here and we're going to go pick that three inch face mill that we set up then we're going to hit okay and i'm going to just let bobcat handle the feeds and speeds for this one so there it is there we're going to go ahead and hit next right here's my patterns page and on here i'm just going to tell it to offset out with a zig pattern and then i'm going to have it climb mill then i can go ahead and hit next now, right here for our depth of cut, I want to be careful with this because it's such a big end mill and it might be an inserted mill. So I don't want to go anything over the insert. So I'm just going to go with 150 thousandths for my depth of cut. And then my step over amount is going to be 0.875. So we're going to do a big old step over right there. Now, down here, we then have an option for intermediate steps. And intermediate steps are used to come back and recut the walls in some of these areas where we might leave a bigger step than we want to come back in with a finish tool to clean up. So I don't want to take my ball mill into a big old step on the part. So I say number of intermediate steps and I'm going to add two intermediate steps. Now down here we have our machining tolerance. We have our cut holes and ignore holes. We have our depth options, user defined. And over here, I'm just going to go and set my allowance at 10 thousandths. So just 0.01. Now, if you want to go a little bit more than that, you could definitely go a little bit more than that. After this, we'll go ahead and hit next. Now for the leads, I'm going to have it plunge and it should plunge off the part and then cut in for this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. Right here's our options. The only thing I want to turn on here on the options page would be the machine flatlands. I want this tool to come back and machine some of the flats if I can get it to. So I'm just going to turn that on and then not set any other changes. And then we'll go next again. Right here we have our links, which is just how we connect our tool path. So I'll go direct between groups and direct within groups. So just set them both there. Right here we have our gouge check. And at this point, I'm not going to set up anything for gouge checking because I don't think there's going to be a gouge with this tool path. I really don't have any weird geometry that I'd have to worry about a gouge happening. But you will find out when you simulate if a gouge is going to appear. And if it does, you may want to come back in here and set some geometry as gouge check surfaces. Other than that, I'll hit next. We're not going to make any changes to the advanced feed rates. We'll go next again. Now, we're using the flatlands now, so I'm going to go up to the tool crib. I'm going to go ahead and choose the same 3-inch face mill and then hit OK. And really, all this tool path is going to do is it's going to go in, it's going to make a cut, give us nice flat floors, and then it's going to leave. So I'm going to go with a parallel cut pattern, Then I'll go ahead and hit next. Right here for my step over, I'm going to go 3 quarters of an inch, so 0.75. And the minimum width is going to be 50 thou. And then the tolerance I'm going to leave right there at half a thou. 
down here we don't have any top or bottom of job and now we're finishing the part so i want to leave my allowance at zero and then we can go ahead and hit next right here we then have our lead and so for the leads on this i'm not going to change the entry but i want to add a nice circular lead with a radius that's bigger than the radius of my tool so i'm just going to say 1.6 and then hit next now we're not going to make any changes here on the parameters page we're just going to hit next again and then for the links i'm just going to set it to follow we're not going to change anything else we'll go next right here's our gouge check again if we find a gouge we can come fix it but as of now i don't think there's going to be any gouges so we'll say next again right here's our advanced feed rates so we're going to leave it right there and then hit next now finally we're on to our z level finish or our advanced z level finish whichever one you purchased or whichever one you have on your license now i'm going to go up to the tool crib and this one's going to use the half inch ball mill so i'll pick that then hit okay again i'm letting bobcad do the feed rates and then i'll go ahead and hit next again now on this page we're going to tell it to go from the top down we're going to make sure it zigs so it keeps everything moving in the same direction and we're going to climb mill next we then get to set up our depth of cut so the depth of cut for the finish on this is going to be 30 thou and we're going to use an adaptive depth of cut now this allows us to go in and do a minimum depth step and a maximum step over so my minimum depth step is basically me telling bobcat that in certain areas where it sees it needs it it's allowed to use a depth of cut of 15 thousandths instead of 30. so i'll just say 0 0.015 and then the maximum step over is just so if we need to travel further than the 15th hour, or even the 30th hour, then we're going to try and put a tool path in every 30 thousandths here. So we'll just say 30 thou for the maximum step over. And then we have our machining tolerance right down here. We're going to go ahead and say pick bottom. So we're going to do our bottom a job and we're just going to say pick. And we're going to just pick the base right here just this ledge you could pick the top of the hole you could pick that point it doesn't matter where it is you're just going to hit okay and we want it to just go down to one and a half inches i don't want this going into the slots at all because i'm going to use a two axis feature to cut those so right there we have our bottom of job we don't have any allowance because we're finishing the part so we'll go ahead and hit next now for the leads we're just going to leave it on a plunge with a vertical lead in we'll go next again we're going to just choose 3d extents for our cutting extents just to make sure we cut everything we need to and then we'll hit next again right here for our linking we're just going to have it follow the link and then i'm going to go ahead and change my linking position i'm just going to shift them by i'll say an eighth of an inch and that way they're going to cycle down instead of making a straight line down the part they'll actually move down and around the finish there then we could hit next we have our gouge check and again we're not going to set anything there and then finally the advanced feed rates when we're all done, we can hit compute. And then after that toolpath finishes calculating, there we have all the views of it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and blank out that toolpath. And we can actually look at this individually now. We can see here's the advanced rough, here's the flatlands, and here's the advanced Z level finish. So from here, I'm just going to blank it out and then shrink it up just so I know that I'm done with it. Now, the next one we're going to do is a two axis pocket with a profile finish and then the chamfer mill so we can get the chamfers on the top edge of this thing so we're going to right click we're going to go down to mill two axis and we're going to select our geometry now the geometry for this you could either pick the edges of the part all the way around or you could just pick the floors of the two pockets right there so we could just pick those two floors and that's the entire piece of geometry and then down here we're going to say pick top i don't want it to start up here at zero this material is all gone so I want it to go down and say, start here at minus 1.5 and then go down to the total depth right here. So you can actually pick the top and then pick the bottom just by clicking the edges and then hit OK. Now, after we have the geometry selected, we can go ahead and hit next. There's a preview of our geometry, our top of feature and our total depth of cut. And then we can hit next. Right here's our machining strategy. So for this one, we're going to go ahead and choose the default strategy of pocketing right here, which will give us a pocket and a profile finish. Now, added onto this, I now want to do a chamfer mill. So I'm going to make sure to click on profile finish. And then over here under available operations, we can click on chamfer mill and move it over. If you accidentally move it to the wrong position, just use these arrows to move it to the correct position. Then hit next. Now, for the tabs, we're not going to leave any tabs. We're actually cutting pockets. This is just part of the two axis that you really would only use on profile cuts. But we'll go ahead and hit next. 
right here's our posting tab i want to use work offset number one and if i use contour ramping i want it to output with arc moves next now it actually picked the correct tool for us we have our three eighths flat end mill so we'll go ahead and hit next again right here we have our patterns page so on the patterns we have two different pockets that we can run and in this case, because they're both closed pockets, unless we go with something like a morph spiral or an adaptive roughing, the standard and the advanced between the, the parallel, the offset pocket out, and the offset pocket in are pretty much going to be the same. The difference is the advanced pocket has the ability to leave the part. So you could do open pocketing with the advanced pocket. So I'm just going to use that, and I'll say offset pocket out. And then down here, I have a step over of 50%, and then I'll hit next. Right here, we have our parameters. So we have our side allowance. I'm going to leave that at 15 thousandths. Down here, we have our depth. So we could either do this all in one step or we could do multiple steps. So I'm going to do multiple steps and I'm going to set it to a depth of 0.25. And then we could hit next. And then right here, we have our lead. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a ramp entry. And I'm going to tell it that the ramp length, the radius is a quarter of an inch. That's actually fine. If I want to go a little bit smaller, I'd usually go down to half of the size of the tool. So whatever the radius of the tool is, is a good number to be at. That way the tool's moving back and forth across that. So from here, we'll go ahead and hit next. We're not going to change anything for the machine sequencing. We're not going to change anything for the links. And we're not going to change anything for the advanced feed rates. Now onto the profile finish, we're going to use the same tool. So I want to go up to the tool crib, go over here to end mill rough, and choose my 3 8 flat end mill, then hit OK. Now this one's pretty standard. We're just gonna walk through it. There's not much going on. If you want a G41 to output in the code, you'd wanna make sure to turn on machine compensation left. If you wanna do a wear compensation, you're gonna leave both on, but if you only want one comp, you're gonna turn off the system comp. So you have a G41 that outputs in the code and you're gonna do the entire offset at the machine. If you turn this off, you're gonna let Bobcad handle the compensation or if you turn them both on you're going to comp the wear of your tool at the machine now if you turn them both off you're going to be doing a center line cut so i'm just going to turn them both on and that way it'll offset the geometry here in bobcad but i still will have an adjustment that i could make out at the machine from here we'll go next we have our parameters page and we're not going to set anything different here we're just going to hit next again Right here, we have our leads. Now for that G41 to output, I wanna go ahead and change my lead in type to something like a circular lead. And I'm just gonna set it to the size of half my tool. So 0.1875. And then for the radius, I'm gonna go 0.1875. So just the radius of that 3 8 tool, and then hit next. Right here's our corner types. We're not gonna make any changes here. Next again, no changes to the machine sequence and no changes to the advanced feed rates. Finally, we get onto the chamfer mill. So it should pick the chamfer mill because it's the only chamfer mill we have in the system right now. And so there it is, we'll go ahead and hit next. Right here's our patterns page. So I want Bobcad to handle the compensation here. So I'm gonna say, go to the left, then we'll go next again. In here, we have our cutter position at 20 thousandths. The small diameter on my chamfer is an eighth of an inch and my chamfer angle is 45 degrees. All I'm going to change on here is I'm going to set my depth to 30 thousandths and then hit next. Right here, we're not going to mess with any leads. We're just going to plunge right in. Right here, we have our corner types, our machine sequencing, and finally, again, our advanced feed rate. And then when we're all done, we can finally hit compute. And it should be a pretty quick one. There's our tool path right inside the pocket there. There's our tool path there. And there's our pocket. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on there. I'm going to blank unblank the toolpath and then i always like to rename it so i'm just going to say rename and just call it slots and there we have it and then i'm going to shrink it up now the last two things we need to do is just drill some holes and the best part is we've already created the chamfer mill here so we don't have to recreate that anymore we'll actually be able to copy and paste that into these other features so i'm going to right click on machine setup one i'm going to go to mill drill hole I'm gonna say select geometry. Now for the geometry, what I'm gonna pick is the inside wall to all three holes, one, two, and three. And then we'll hit okay. Now what we'll see is we have our three eighths holes and we have our three quarter inch holes. I wanna go in here and just say pick our bottoms, but I wanna do it on the next page because when I hit next, I can do it a little bit differently. So right here, we're on our three eighths hole and I'm gonna say pick the top and I'm just gonna say pick this edge right here and that represents the top. So I'll hit okay. And that's gonna get my 
bottom a feature of minus 1.5. And then I'm just going to say pick bottom. I know I'm going into a pocket, but I want to clear all the way through because the pocket's not into here yet. So all I'm doing is picking this edge and then hitting OK. And it's going to know the depth is now going two inches deep. Now, one other thing that's going to happen is these two holes are going to try and group together and rip right through my part because I don't have my rapid plane set high enough, which I don't want to change the rapid plane. What I'm going to do is instead of changing the rapid plane, I'm just going to break these two holes so they're not in the same group. So I'm just going to click on the group and then say break hole group. And now I have hole one and hole two. And this should go up and over the part to get to the second hole. Next, we then have our machining strategy. So for this one, I'm just going to choose the hole option under the default strategy. And that gives me a center drill and a drill. Now for this one, I'm going to say apply to all features. And what that's going to do is it's going to copy the center drill and the drill from this 3 8 down to the 3 quarter center drill and drill. Next, we then have to set up our sequencing. There's only two holes, so I'm going to go with optimized. Right here's our posting. Just make sure it's on work offset one. Right here we have our center drill, which is what we put into our crib earlier. So we'll go next again. And then right here we have our parameters. So this is how deep we want to drill that initial hole. And I'm just going to leave it right there at the 80 thou. Next we have our drill, which is our 3 8 drill, which we set up earlier. And then finally we have our parameters page. So we'll see that the total depth that it's going to end up going is 2.162 inches deep. And that's because we automatically add on 50 thousandths and we factor in the tip of the drill. So we make sure to clear all the way through that drill angle. Next, we then have our feature page for the top hole. So this one's actually pretty simple. We're just going to say pick top, and we're going to pick the top edge right here. Any edge is going to be fine. And then we're going to go ahead and say pick bottom, and this one's got to go all the way through the part as well. So I'm just going to pick the bottom and hit OK, and we'll see that this one's going to go three and a half inches deep. But since this doesn't have a pair, we don't have to worry about grouping or anything like that. So we'll go next. Right here, we're going to choose the center drill and the drill once again. And then we have our machine sequence. Next, we have our posting. And then again, we have our center drill, which I'm not going to change the size here. I'm just going to leave it at that 80 thou. And then finally, we get to our three quarter inch drill and the parameters. So for this one, I'm going to peck my way through and I'm just going to let Bobcat figure out the peck. And then I'm just going to hit compute. Now, the best part of this is now we have these three holes getting done, but we didn't do their chamfers. So what I can actually do is I can expand the slot feature. I can right click on the chamfer mill and I can say copy. And then I can right click on my feature mill hole and I can say paste. And then I can do the same thing for the other one, just paste it under both of these. And so now if I come in and I compute my tool path, there's our chamfer for the two small holes. And then I'll compute this one down here. And there is our chamfer for the top hole. So if I unblank everything on this part, so we have our blank, unblank, there is all the tool path. Now, what you can do is you can go simulate this and find out how it's going to turn out. And if you like the way that it looks, you can post the code just by right-clicking on milling job and then saying post. And your G-code is going to pop up over here on the right side of the screen or wherever you have your posting tab. And that concludes the video on the mill tutorial from inside version 32.